Hi everyone, you are with Stream Shapers, and today we are going to make a lower third that you will be able to use as a dynamic HTML graphic template for your live production. It is going to have a start and a stop animation. You will of course be able to change the name and the box will grow and shrink with the text's width. If your second line is going to be longer than the first line, the box will also adapt to that. Dependent on your input, the lower third will be either on the left or on the right side. Let's get started and open After Effects. I am currently using version 24.1.0. Create a new composition, let's just stick with Full HD and 25 frames per second is okay for me. Call it lower third and I like to use a middle grey background for my composition. I will set the preview size to fit the window size. Create an empty text layer by double clicking the text tool in your toolbar. Write name surname as a placeholder. I will use Open Sun Semibold, have the text size at 60px, use metric for our kerning and make the color my currently favorite gray. Place the text somewhere in the lower left corner. Select the layer and hit enter to change its name. Call the layer underscore first line, especially the underscore at the beginning is important for our naming convention. Duplicate the layer, drag it under the first one and type in function for now. Select the text and change its size to 40px. Let's use OpenSans regular for that. Move it somewhere under the first line and rename it to underscore second line. Again, the underscore at the beginning, as this shall be a dynamic text layer. Create a rounded rectangle, the tool might be hidden under the normal rectangle in your toolbar. Make it a bit larger than your text for now. Rename the layer to background and drag it under the text layers. Yeah. Let's have its size be dependent on the text size. For that, under rectangle, rectangle path, size. Hold Alt and click on the stopwatch. This is the size of the rectangle, not the size of the layer. We will need the width of the first text as well as the width of the second text, so we pick whip them into our expression. With source rected time, we can get its current state at this specific time in the timeline. Create a variable called longLine that will store the name of our longer line. By default, our first line shall be defined as the longer line. Then we compare those two lines with the smaller than operator, specifically the widths of them, so add dot .width to those. Write if before that and place the statement between normal brackets. After the statement, open curly brackets and type in what should happen if the statement is true. If the statement first line is smaller than the second line is true, we want the long line variable to be updated to underscore second line. The first dimension shall be called x and b the longer line's width. The second dimension shall be whatever we set it to within its standard input field that we can simply pick whip. Place x and y into an array. Let's see if it works. Yes it does. But let's adjust its position to match and adjust the height a little bit. If we now make the text longer, it gets out of the boundaries as you can see. Also, the longer line is correctly evaluated. We will also update its position based on the text's width, but first add some padding to its size. Let's use padding of 60 and also another padding with 100. And add it to the X component.
Now the lines have some room to breathe. Copy the part with the evaluation of the longer line. Go to the rectangle's position and alt-click the stopwatch to create an expression and paste the code snippet in there. Then make a variable for the text's x position. So call it posttextx and define it as discomp.layer with the long line variable in brackets dot transform dot position with a zero in square brackets as we only want the x but not the y component. Duplicate that and change the x for y to have a second variable. Make it reference not the long line but always the underscore first line named layer. Change the zero for a one to get its y position not its x position. Also create some padding. This must be the same value as in the size expression. x shall be post text x plus open bracket padding right divided by 2 close bracket. y shall be whatever post text y is. Put x and y inside square brackets to make an array of them. Test it. The rectangle disappeared because its layer position is not right. Just drag it to fit with the text's position. Now if we select the texts, the rectangle follows because its position is linked to the first line's position. Drag it wherever you want it. Try it and find out that we need to add half of the text width to the x position. So evaluate the text's width and add it to x and have only the width divided by 2. Test it and find out, now it works. Great! Collapse the layers, duplicate the background layer and name it background logo. Select the layer and hit the E button on your keyboard twice to reveal all expressions in that layer. Delete the expressions in that layer as we do not want the logo background to grow and shrink with the text size. Position it and give it a nice color. I will use the hex code E4DFDA for my logo background. Make it a bit smaller. Use the rectangle size, not the layer size as the rounded corners would deform if you used the wrong one. Position it also together with the other components. Then import your logo. I have mine in Adobe Illustrator format. Import as footage and from there drag it into the timeline. Scale and position it to fit onto its rectangle. Then I like to convert the illustrator file into a shape file and get rid of the illustrator connection. Let's test again. Great! Looks good to me. And second line also looks good. Press Ctrl plus A, then A to only open anchor point attributes, then A once again to collapse all the attributes. Now for the left right option. Duplicate a text layer and rename it to underscore left slash right. Remember, the underscore at the beginning is to make the layer dynamic later. Drag that layer somewhere else to not get confused. Doesn't matter where, because we will hide it later anyways. What we want to do later is, when the text says zero, we want our lower third on the left hand side. If it's a one, the lower third shall be on the right-hand side. But first add some animation. While we're on it, 
Let's make our dynamic text layers yellow for better visibility. Then select all layers, except for the logo background and the left right switcher text layer. Parent those selected to the logo background shape layer. Reposition the other background as it changed its position when it got parented. If we now drag the logo background, the rest of the lower third moves with it and we can use that to animate just one value per lower third. Press P to open the position attribute. Go to 1 second and 17 frames and set the render area ending by pressing N on your keyboard. Go to the beginning of your timeline and set the render area start with B on your keyboard if it's not already set there. Then create a marker there with the asterisk, the star button on your numpad. Double click the marker to edit its attributes. Write start in lowercase in the comment. Make its duration 1 second and leave its time at 0. Hit OK, then move your playhead to 1 second and create another marker by pressing the small star on your number pad. Double click it, set its duration to 17 frames and write stop in lowercase into the comment section. Now back to animation. Position the logo background layer properly and hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Move it one frame back. That's the end of our in animation. Set a new keyframe at one second. This will be the beginning of our stop animation. Go to the last frame and change the position so that the whole lower third is outside the visible area. Keep in mind that our lower third dynamically changes its size with the amount of text. Copy that last keyframe to the very beginning to complete the start animation. Now just easy ease the keyframes interpolation by right click, keyframe assistant and selecting easy ease. But maybe not the first and last one. You can make them linear again by right clicking those and select keyframe interpolation linear. Now that's better. You could also add their curves but I won't do that now. Animation is done, back to the left-right selection. If the selector is 0, we want the left side. If 1, it should be on the right side. For that, let's add an expression to the opacity of our background. Select the layer and hit T as in transparency to open the opacity. Then Alt-click the stopwatch. Define the variable side input as the source text of the underscore left-right layer by peak whipping that attribute. Then make an if statement that checks if the side input is zero. If so, the 100 inside the curly brackets means the opacity will be at 100%, else it will be set to 0%. Give it a try and see that it works. Then copy that expression to the other's opacity attributes that should be dependent on the selector. This left side of lower third is only visible when the value in left right selector is zero. I'll add some L prefixes to my layer names, except for the dynamic layers of course. Duplicate those layers to build the right sided lower third and rename them to not get confused. We can also add the prefix to those text layers as they will just copy the source text from the left sided lower third. Change some colors as you like and find the source text attributes of those texts to make them copy the other source texts.
Just add an expression and pick whip the original source texts. To make the right side appear whenever the left right selector says 1, we have to alter the opacity expressions. Change the 0 for 100 and where 100 was should now be 0. Copy this altered expression to the other layers that will make the right sided lower third. Select the middle two keyframes of the right sided logo background and drag that layer to the right side to update these keyframes. Delete those keyframes with the beginning and ending position and place new ones instead. Again I want that one to be linear. Then copy and paste. Let's try. Yep, works. So let's make it nicer. Change the texts from left aligned to right aligned and their position to fit. The background will still want to grow to the right side. Go into the expression for the rectangle's position and change it to not add half of the text width, but subtract it. Let's add some more text to test it. Works fine and also to the second line. Also works as expected. Great. The animation also works on the right side. Let's change to the left side. Test it with some text and see we are finished with our dynamic double-sided automatic box resize to line lower third. Don't forget to hide the text layers you don't want to see or move them anywhere invisible. In the video description you will find the full workflow playlist with how to export this composition and how Streamshapers Ferryman will make a finished HTML graphic template for you. Also have a look at streamshapers.com for more information on what we do. Thank you very much for watching and following along.